Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and I just got back from the new film, Blue Caprice. The 2002 Beltway DC sniper shootings and the father-son relationship of the two men behind them, as this film takes place in the backdrop of the political climate of 2002, which is very much in the post-9-11 world. It's taking a very much of a artier kind of father-son relationship approach to this story, and I think it's a story that could be really done more of a salacious way, more of a kind of villainous way, a more judgy way. You could side with the killers, you could not side with the killers, and the director of this film, Alexandra Moores, he takes a big step back, and a chilling step back, really, because he's not too close to them that it's playing like a Hollywood film and you can really identify with them or sympathize with them. It's more farther back than a really even a journalistic matter-of-fact tone. It's really kind of chilled and relaxed in what it's trying to do, but also very intense in other places. Because of its cold way of attacking a story, and how slow it can move through things, and how it can let these characters kind of build with one another. When things do get intense, they feel very intense. You understand how they get there, but you don't sympathize with them. You understand the madness. Isaiah Washington's performance in Talk Queen, Richmond, don't play it up in a way that they feel like kind of a character of a villain. They feel like a real person, like they needed something to kind of believe in because the world has become shit and the world is falling apart. And there was that kind of feeling in the post 9-11 America that anything could just destroy the fabric of society. And there are a lot of incidents, you know, whether it's, you know, 9-11 itself or the anthrax scare or um, what happened with the 2002 shooting. We had had so long without any kind of violent attacks and it kind of built up this kind of safeguard around everything. It gave Isaiah Washington's character a lot of power to go and do these kind of things and really rip apart this world and this world that has really rejected him. He got divorced, he lost custody of his kids, he can't even see his kids and people who he knew testified against him and he felt very betrayed and betrayed by this society. And Taquin Richmond's character has no real focus in his life, he has no parental guidance and he has no real role model or teacher and then Isaiah Washington comes along and is kind of the wrong kind of tutor for him. Tuckman Richmond was previously on Everybody Hates Chris, and it took me a while, like, I kept watching the film, like, I know that guy from somewhere, and I couldn't figure it out, and then I looked at his IMDb page, he was the older brother on Everybody Hates Chris, and he is a very promising young actor. It's kind of one of those supporting performances that kind of goes unnoticed during the film, but afterwards you're like, wow, that was that was pretty incredible. Isaiah Washington has a lot of power behind what he's saying. Not that it's good what he's saying, but he has a lot of power to his performance. He makes him both a monster and a man, and that you can understand where he's coming from, but it doesn't rip through the kind of depiction that the director's doing. Even though the two leads are leads for more mainstream stuff, they do performances that work within this that are kind of a little artier and a little stranger, but also have a lot of power behind them. And it shows a lot about both of them as an actor, but Isaiah Washington is someone I haven't thought about in a long time, and I thought he was rather good. It shows the kind of villainous monster roles he could be playing. I feel like as an actor, he's really dedicated himself to understanding where this character is coming from. He has such a strong belief behind everything he says. He has a strong meaning behind everything he says. There's so much hurt behind him, but there's so much control also, and it feels very evil. He's a very manipulative man, but he knows what he's doing, and he also completely doesn't know what he's doing, and it's completely dangerous. Being so removed from your subjects but also being the focus of the film is really the strength of this director. And he does a lot of things that I think are really interesting. The fact that this is really about the father-son relationship of these two men who are not father and son, that he seems to be way more interested in that than the actual shootings themselves. This reminds me a lot of a film I saw in the summer called A Hijacking, which I quite liked. And I think this is similar to that in which it's like way more interested in the drama of something and the relationships of an event than the action part of the event. Taking a more artier approach 
And by taking that artier approach, it's like rejecting what could be action sequences. It indulges in it more than a hijacking did. It shows a strong director that you can tell a story like this and not show the headline for this movie and how you could get into it is it's about the 2002 sniper DC shootings. And obviously you think, oh, there's going to be these scenes with the shootings. It's not that much of the film, really. It's more about their relationship and how that relationship grows and how it became. Even Tyler Queen's character is referring to himself as his son, like, that's my father, and how that arc even happened and how that all came together. It made this film intriguing, but it also, it's so kind of held back that it's almost like hard to get into, but also very kind of relatable at the same time. It's a very interesting experience. I'm very curious to see where Alexandra Moores goes with his career. And a lot of times this film felt very professional and like he's like a new kind of interesting voice. This does feel like, like your typical indie movie or whatever, but he is kind of doing it in his own way. He definitely has a voice about him. I did notice sometimes though, it would feel very amateurish. There's certain times where they'd be talking to a minor character and it felt like they just grabbed someone in on the street with literally no acting experience and practically no charisma. And they're dealing with Isaiah Washington or Taquin Richmond who have a lot of charisma on screen. The juxtaposition was very jarring. I liked how kind of raw this director was and I like that about it, and it did feel very much like a director, like a first feature, works with the aesthetic of the film, but I don't know if I necessarily like that overall. But even though he'd have some parts that were more raw and amateurish, he'd have some parts that were visually very impressive, how he could tell a story with the blue caprice driving to DC with it, the rain, and you can see its red taillights glowing, or there's certain scenes with Isaiah Washington where you just see a shadow that looked like something out of an old Hollywood film. He has a very deep visual eye. He took such a step back from it, you're getting such a cold response in that you can see how these characters became what they are, but you're almost, you're not relating to it because it has such a cold, removed feel from it. It's like you're watching someone spiral into madness, but in a way that's like so chilled and relaxed, it makes it almost even a little more sinister. So if you have seen Blue Caprice and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.